Welcome to segment three and part two of the Bible says this. What say you? Psalms 33 verse four. For the word of the Lord is right. This is the Bible says this. What say you? Christmas edition. You get it? See the tree over here behind me? We're having a ball today. I've just finished talking to you about that mighty man of God who lived back in the third uh, century, fourth century, uh, St. Nicholas and the great work that he did. I mean, his, his acts of charity, Gary, was so great that it became the stuff of legend. And now we got this other guy who eats too much and uh, he goes from house to house all night. But listen, if you missed the, uh, the, the previous segment, you ought to get it. That was segment two. If you missed it, you should get it. Make sure you listen to it because I talk about St. Nicholas. Now, I want to talk to you about the Christmas tree. There's a lot of talk about whether or not we should uh, have Christmas trees, whether or not it is appropriate to have a Christmas tree in your home, uh, whether uh, the having a Christmas tree is participating in a pagan celebration, or well, what is the deal about the Christmas tree? The first thing I would like to mention to you is the role that trees plays in the Bible. Tree, trees play uh, a, a, a theological role in the Bible, for the Bible uh, begins, it opens with a tree. Uh, the middle section of the Bible deals with a tree. Uh, as a matter of fact, the Bible opens with trees. And then uh, in, in midway, the New Testament, the Bible talks about a tree. And then uh, the Bible c closes mentioning uh, a tree. In Genesis <clears throat> chapter 2, uh, verse 8, it says, And the Lord God planted a garden east in Eden. All right, eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed, and, uh, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also was in the middle of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil uh, was in the midst of the God. So we see here early in the Bible, Genesis chapter 2, the Bible talking about trees, fruit trees, the tree of life, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Even in the book of Hosea chapter 14, verse 8, the God of the Bible compares himself to a evergreen or to a pine tree. He says in Hosea 14 and 8, Ephraim shall say, what have I to do anymore with idols? I have heard him and observed him. Listen to God. I am like a green fir tree. From me is thy fruit found. That is, I am like a pine tree tree. Now, as we continue to study, we find in the book of Acts, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5 and verse 30, we see uh, the word of the Lord saying this about our Lord. And Peter uh, is preaching. The word of God is being preached. And uh, he says, verse 30, and God, the God of our fathers, raised up Jesus whom ye slew, and you hang on, or you hanged on a tree. So Jesus was hung on a tree. And there are multiple passages that I could read, but for time's sake I won't, of Christ being hung on a tree. Well, now if we go over to Revelations, chapter 22, verse 2 says, In the midst of the street of it, on either side of the river, there was the tree of life, which were, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yield their fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. So we see in the beginning, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the tree of life, 
the Lord bringing forth trees and each tree before the fall bore fruit. We see that our Lord was hung on a tree and we see in the culmination of all things in Revelations there, there will be the tree of life and it will bear all kinds of fruit, all manner of fruit uh, every month. My Lord, we're going to have a good time. Uh, I'm going to eat uh, probably every one of them, you know, because uh, we're going to be there forever and I'll have time and so will you. So we see the role that just a tree plays in the, in the Bible all throughout. It begins with a tree and opens with a tree. Now let's talk about uh, the Christmas tree. Christmas tree. See this tree behind me here. Uh, I'm at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ and, and uh, the, the, um, uh, the tree was assembled by one of our fine members, uh, Miss Carol Peoples, and uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful tree. I, I love it. It's in the vestibule of the church. The Christmas tree, let's talk about it for a minute. Um, originally called the Chrismon tree. Pronounced, it's spelled uh, C-H-R-I-S M-O-N-D, Chrismond, Chrismond, pronounced K-R-I-Z dash M-O-N, Chrismond. And again, I'm, I'm looking at the excellent work that was done uh, by uh, Peter um, Batterio, Batellero of uh, Charisma Magazines, and uh, he just did a tremendous job uh, on the subject, and I recommend you to try to look up his work, and it will bless you, and we have other references, of course, we're dealing with the scripture, uh, but the, 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 the word chrisma comes from a Latin word uh, for monogram. Uh, a, a chrisma is a Christmas tree that has been purposely decorated with symbols that clearly point to the person and work of Christ and the biblical account of his incarnation. The first Christmas or Christmas tree was decorated to tell the story of the birth, uh, the, the birth and uh, life and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. In effect, a Christmas tree Chrisman tree serves as a word picture, telling the story of Christ's birth with its decorations. Chrisman's emerged in 1957 when Francis Kipps Spencer, the daughter of a Lutheran minister, decorated her Lutheran church Christmas tree with the centuries old monograms and crystograms that pointed to the person and work of Christ. Many Christian homes today are intentionally making their Christmas trees uh, celebrations more Christ-centered by turning their Christmas trees into Christmas trees. So you see there are Christians who are using every opportunity and everything at their disposal to tell the story of Christ. And, and my friends, let me just address this. Now for those who make the argument that a thing should not be used to celebrate the Lord or the point to Jesus Christ or included in a Christian service or Christian worship because, you know, some pagans used it first. You hear, all, you hear this argument all the time. The pagans had it first. The pagans did this. Originally, this was done by a pagan this or a pagan that. Well, my friends, if you follow that argument to its logical con conclusion, we've got to surrender the whole creation to pagans. We can't use anything to worship the Lord. Because think of something that the, old, the pagan religions that, were older than, that are older than Christianity, that are older than Judaism, uh, think of all the things that these false religions and these false de demonic religions used, uh, the, the materials. If, if, you, if you can't uh, use wood because, you know, the pagans had it first, then, you know, what about the cross? 
if you, if you can't, if you can't uh, uh, celebrate, uh, you can't use fire, you can't use water, you, you, know, you, you know, Jesus turned water into wine at the marriage feast of Cana. Well, there is mythological, uh, there are mythological teachers that the false god Dionysus uh, would turn water into wine on a regular basis and that that false god did it more than Jesus did and Jesus did it one time. Uh, at the marriage feast of Canaan. So should Christ not have turned water into wine? In Jeremiah chapter 10, Jeremiah describes the people going down into the woods, cutting down a tree, and making, decorating the tree into a false god. Not a Christmas tree. Now you, you know, you, you know my friends. My friends! My friends. Now you know Jeremiah couldn't have been talking about a Christmas tree. Because at the time when Jeremiah lived and ministered, uh, Christ hadn't been born yet. Jeremiah uh, uh, served in the Old, he's an Old Testament prophet, mighty man of God. As a matter of fact, in our 8 a.m. Uh, ministers and training class, we're studying the life and times uh, of the prophet Jeremiah and all that this mighty man of God said and the things that this mighty man of God did. But the prophet Jeremiah lived um, uh, from some 627 BC, uh, six, 600 years or so before Christ was born. So um, he couldn't have been talking about a Christmas tree. He was talking about idolatry. Now that the people who practice idolatry, they did, they, they did go down into the woods, okay? They cut the tree down. They fastened the tree to a platform. You can read it right here in, in, in Jeremiah 10. Read it when you get home. <laughs> read it after you watch this. You may be at home already. That they did this is it, true. But they weren't building a Christmas tree, nor were they erecting a Christmas tree, nor were they erecting the 11th century's paradise tree, which was a part of a play which was designed to teach the illiterate in the audience the story of Adam, Eve, and the fall. The, uh, the, uh, uh, Christ, that, that, was a Christ, that was the paradise tree which told the story of the fall of Adam and Eve, a, a powerful, powerful story that was, uh, and, and, and in this play there were two trees, the tree of the knowledge of, of uh, good and evil and the tree of life and how uh, they failed after they took of the uh, tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So my friends, be careful uh, that you do not apply every instance of pagans using something. Every time you, you see that, you say, well, we can't, we can't use it. Well, in that case, then we can't baptize. Now, Jesus was baptized of John. John the Baptist did baptize. But baptism predated Christianity. And it was part of other false religions. You see? And so uh, watch that because you, 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 what you'll do is you will, you will actually tie your, your hands and put yourself in a corner. And you won't even be able to worship the Lord. You won't, you won't be able to do anything but lift your hands then you probably won't be able to do that because, Gary, before Judaism and before Christianity, other false religions and false religions, they worship those false gods by lifting their hands. Do you see how, you, do you see what happens when you follow absurdity to its logical, its illogical conclusion? It robs you of the ability to worship your Lord. Let me tell you something. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwelleth therein. And when we take things that God put here, and we use them to glorify the Lord, and to lift up Jesus Christ, the Lord is pleased. Amen. You're going to take the tree and some things that have previous, previously been used to glorify Satan, who did not corrupt them, who did not make them, and who does not own them, and we take them and we point them back to their rightful creator, for as Patrick Wooden is concerned, that's a good thing. So erect a beautiful Christmas tree, a paradise tree, a Christmas tree. I'll join you in the next section.